I wanted to do a video to explain the difference between a mecha quartz chronograph movement versus a standard quartz chronograph movement. So I have a sample of watches here that use both, so let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between them. First up is this Invicta Speedway. This uses a standard quartz chronograph movement, which happens to be a Miyota OS20. We can see on the dial that at 3 o'clock we have a subdial, which is actually a 24-hour time hand that is not part of the chronograph. At 6 o'clock we have running seconds, which is not part of the chronograph. And at 9 o'clock we have a 60-minute counter, which is part of the chronograph, along with a large sweep centered second hand, which is part of the chronograph and can be used to measure one second increments and also used for the tachymeter. So when I start this chronograph, we're gonna see the large sweep second hand start to sweep at one second increments. So this is generally the first sign that this is not a mecha quartz because it's moving in one second increments. But the biggest tell is really the reset. So when we stop this chronograph and I reset it, that large second hand is gonna sweep back to zero or 12 o'clock, but it's gonna be a little slow. It's not gonna fly back instantaneously like a mechanical chronograph would do. So let's go ahead and reset it. We can kind of see that sweep back to zero. Next up is this Danalu Quartz Chronograph, which is an homage to a Swatch Moon Swatch. Now this one uses a Sunon PE50 Quartz movement. It is not a Mecha Quartz. Let's take a look at the dial layout. So at two o'clock we have a 12 hour time subdial that is not part of the chronograph. At six o'clock we have running seconds, which is not part of the chronograph. At 10 o'clock we have a 60 minute counter which is part of the chronograph. And in the center, we have a large sweep hand, which is also part of the chronograph. So let's take a look at how this one behaves. We're gonna start it. Now, one difference between this Sunon PE50 movement and the Miyota that we looked at earlier was that this one actually sweeps in one fifth second increments. So typically when you see this, you might be thinking it's a mecha quartz, but it's not. And how we know is that the reset behaves like a standard quartz, not a mecha quartz. I'm gonna stop the chronograph. Now watch when we reset it, the large second hand is gonna sweep back to zero, but it's gonna do it kind of slowly. It's not gonna snap back. Because of this, we know that this is a standard quartz. It is not a mecha quartz. Next, let's take a look at a true mecha quartz movement. So this happens to be a Seiko Spirit Line SBTR029 which uses the Seiko 8T67 movement, also known as the TMI VK67. So TMI is also under the Epson umbrella, which owns Seiko, TMI, and Orient. So let's take a look at this dial layout. At 12 o'clock, we have a 60 minute counter, which is part of the chronograph. At six o'clock, we have running seconds, which is not part of the chronograph. At nine o'clock, we have a 12 hour counter. So this chronograph will actually count up to 12 hours. When we start this one, we're gonna feel a positive click. And that's one way that we know that it's actually a mecha quartz movement because it has a feel more like a mechanical chronograph versus a typical quartz chronograph. And we can see the large second hand sweeping in one fifth second increments. So that's the first sign that we know that it's possibly a mecha quartz. But how we're gonna know for sure is the reset. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Now when I push the reset button, we're gonna see that second hand fly back to zero and it's gonna be real quick. So now we know that this is a true mecha quartz based on the reset. One other unique thing about mecha quartz is that you can't adjust the chronograph hands using the crown and the pushers like you would typically a quartz chronograph. 
So usually if things get out of calibration and you need to reset the hands, on a typical quartz chronograph, you can usually pull the crown to position one or position two and use the top and bottom pushers to adjust or recalibrate the chronograph hands. But with a mecha quartz, you can't do that because it's mechanical by nature. So if the hands are off after the reset, then the only solution is to remove the hands and reset them. Another sample of a Mecha Quartz happens to be in this Pagani PD 1644, which is a very, very popular watch here on YouTube. Let's take a look at the dial layout on this watch. At three o'clock, we have a 24 hour time hand, which is not part of the chronograph. At six o'clock, we have running seconds, which is not part of the chronograph. At nine o'clock, we have 60 minutes, which is part of the chronograph. And we have a large sweep second hand. So this one's gonna behave very similar to the Seiko. Again, we have one fifth second increments on the large sweep second hand. I'm gonna stop it. And during the reset, you're gonna see it fly back to zero instantaneously. The last sample that I have here is a fairly unique watch. This happens to be a Tag Heuer 2000 series quartz chronograph, which is most likely from the late 1980s after the merger. Now this is a true Mecha Quartz and maybe one of the original Mecha Quartz in the watch industry. And how do we know this? Well, this uses a caliber 185 movement, which is simply a standard ETA quartz movement, but it has a mechanical chronograph module that's actually tied to it. And that module was made by DD or Dubo Dupree. I'm probably not pronouncing that properly, but that was a very popular module at the time and not only tied to quartz, but also used in some mechanical automatic movements as well. And one way that we know this is because the alignment of the pushers and the crown are offset, they're not on the same plane. So that indicates that there's some kind of module and those pushers are located uh, closer to the dial. So let's take a look at this dial. So at 12 o'clock, we have running seconds. And what's fairly unique about this watch, there's actually two things that are unique about this watch. The first one is that this watch actually runs in half second increments. So the small second hands run in half second increments, and then also the large chronograph hand also operates in half second increments, which I will show you later. The other thing that's really unique about this watch is that the Cyclops for the date is actually built into the dial. It's not on the crystal itself. It's below the crystal, and I believe it's, it's just, just below the dial. So I think that's, that's really unique what they did there. I don't see many watches that have a Cyclops like that. So as mentioned, we have running seconds at 12 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, we have a 12-hour counter. And at 9 o'clock, we have a 30-minute counter. And this one's going to behave just like the Seiko and the Pagani. When I start the chronograph, we're going to hear a click. Now, what's a little bit different is that that large sweep second hand is actually moving in half second increments, where the other ones were actually moving in one fifth second increments. Now when I stop this and I reset it, it's gonna behave just like the other Mecha Quartz movements. It's gonna snap back to zero instantaneously. There you go. Well, I hope this video helped you understand the difference between a Mecha Quartz movement and a standard Quartz chronograph movement. And just know that if you see a movement or a large second hand sweeping in one fifth second increments, it doesn't automatically mean it's a mecha quartz. So really what determines whether or not a quartz movement is a mecha quartz is how it behaves during the reset. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below and thank you for watching.